On June the 20th, 2001, Gemma Savage and her boyfriend decided to celebrate the end of her second year at university by visiting Lightwater Valley, a popular theme park in Ripon, England. Little did they know that their day of enjoyment would soon turn into a harrowing nightmare. While on board the Treetop Twister, a portable steel roller coaster, an unforeseen error occurred, leading to a series of events that resulted in Gemma's untimely death. So what happened to Gemma whilst aboard the Treetop Twister? Let's talk about it. This is the Treetop Twister disaster, the death of Gemma Savage. Gemma Louise Savage was born in Wath upon Dern in South Yorkshire sometime in 1981. As this case is over 20 years old, I couldn't find much information on Gemma, but her mother described her daughter as being beautiful, bright and loving, and who had everything to live for. She was one of three siblings and was known as the planner of the family, often organising events such as Halloween and her favourite, Christmas. Gemma was a very clever girl and a student at the University of Durham where she studied biomedical sciences in hopes of becoming a part of the medical profession one day. On the 20th of June 2001, Gemma had just finished her second year at university and decided to celebrate by going to Lightwater Valley for the day with her boyfriend, Joseph Shimon. Lightwater Valley opened in 1969 in Ripon, England and was originally established as a farm attraction by Robert Staveley. It gradually expanded its offerings ultimately evolving into a full-fledged theme park in the late 1980s with the introduction of the Sewer Rat. This was the park's first roller coaster. The overwhelming success of the Sewer Rat paved the way for more rides which generated significant attention for the park. In 1997, the park was purchased for a sum of 5.2 million. Lightwater Valley underwent a shift in ownership as it transitioned from being a private family-owned enterprise to being acquired by Queensborough Holdings. The new owners invested massively into the park, opening multiple different amusement attractions. Attractions such as the Sky Rider, the Octopus, the Eagle's Claw, and of course, the Treetop Twister. Manufactured by French company Revachon, the Treetop Twister was a portable steel spinning wild mouse roller coaster. Its opening took place at Lightwater Valley in May 2001. The ride features a seating arrangement where riders are organised in a single row, accommodating four individuals across. The outer seats are designed for tall riders, while the inner seats are intended for those of a smaller stature. The ride lasts approximately one minute and a half and reaches a top of 29 miles per hour. The cars spin as it travels along the track. The safety components feature a lap bar and a seat belt. That day after riding a few different roller coasters in the park, Gemma and Joseph boarded the treetop twister unbeknownst of the horror that was about to occur. So, the pair were on board, and their safety restraints were in place, and the ride set off. Everything appeared to be normal, until the car the two were in suddenly stopped in the middle of the track, as a block section error occurred. In other words, the car Gemma and Joseph were in detected another in front of them, forcing it to stop. There wasn't another car there, it was simply an error. A block section on a roller coaster is a designated segment of the track that is divided by block brakes or signals. These sections are crucial for maintaining the safe operation of multiple trains on the same track. Sensors and signals in each block section monitor train positions and control their movements. As a train enters a block section, the previous section is locked to prevent another train from entering, ensuring a safe distance between trains. Once this happened, the operator used manual controls to turn off the block system and get the coaster moving again. Unfortunately, this resulted in Gemma's car smashing into the one in front of them. This happened twice with the second impact being much worse. Her boyfriend Joseph Shimon, who attended the park with Gemma, witnessed the crash firsthand from the same car. According to him, the impact of the first crash was minor, but the second was much more severe and caused him to black out. He awoke moments later confused and scared. He said, I thought she might have been knocked out. Her head was drooping. She had a small amount of blood on her top and she was making snoring noises. I was talking to her saying, Gemma, are you alright? Are you okay? I was dazed for a good few minutes afterwards. After the incident, Joseph suffered serious whiplash injuries and back pain. The two were both injured, but Gemma sustained serious head and neck injuries and had to be airlifted to Leeds General Infirmary. Tragically, a day after the incident, on the 21st of June, Gemma passed away. 
the ride was closed and an investigation into the incident was launched. Following the inquiry, it came to light that a magnitude of errors was to blame for Gemma's death. Eric Butters, a maintenance electrician, initiated a manual process to safely lower the carriages. Unfortunately, due to a wiring issue, the computerized system continued to operate simultaneously. As a result, Gemma's car was unexpectedly released, causing it to push into the car in front of her before oscillating back and forth in a dip along the track. Ultimately, it collided with a third car at high velocity, which caused Gemma's death. Eric also failed to press the emergency stop button, but this wasn't entirely his fault. According to the testimony presented to the jury, it was stated that Eric and his colleagues had received only one hour of training and were not instructed to activate the emergency stop button prior to utilizing the manual controls. The company responsible for creating the ride, Revachon Industries, was charged with failing to ensure its safe design and construction and failing to give information necessary to ensure the ride was safe. Following the identification of faulty wiring on the ride, park owners and ride manufacturers were collectively fined a sum of £155,000. Additionally, the electrician entrusted with the ride's maintenance received an individual fine of £2,500. Lightwater Valley were then fined £35,000. The coroner went on to say that Gemma's death was misadventure, which infuriated her family. Her father said, Simple actions would have saved Gemma. It was a needless death. I can't put it into words what it means to us. Her mother then said, This is not justice. Justice has not been done today for Gemma. I can never forgive them. We would like to have seen a fine which showed the seriousness of what happened to Gemma. To me, it was derisory. Although the ride was closed down afterwards, it reopened one year later. However, this wasn't the only time the ride became headline news. In 2019, a seven-year-old boy fell 15 feet from the now-renamed Twister ride. Gemma's mother commented on the incident saying, Lessons clearly have not been learned. The ride was not fit for purpose 18 years ago, and it's still causing problems. The accident that killed them had devastated our family, and our thoughts and prayers are with the family of the young boy who was injured. Thankfully, the boy recovered. In my opinion, the tragic case of Gemma Savage serves as a stark reminder of the devastating consequences that can occur on amusement parks when staff aren't properly trained to deal with every situation that could occur involving a park guest's safety. I hope the Savage family is doing better today. Let me know what you think about this case in the comments below. This is not an AI channel, I do all of this myself, the research, writing, editing, thumbnails, etc. And I upload every Thursday. So if you enjoy my work, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more content and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.